Hey everyone, welcome to BCP Med. In this video, I want to compare the strengths of dipole-dipole forces and London dispersion forces. This is not as trivial an exercise as it may seem, and it varies quite a bit molecule to molecule based on a number of factors. Let's go ahead and get started. Generally, when we look at small molecules, dipole forces or dipole interactions are going to be stronger than London dispersion forces. This is because dipole forces offer a permanent electrostatic attraction between molecules. For example, in these two molecules shown below, the proximity between the partial positive charge on the right, the blue, and the partial negative charge on the left, the red, will lead to a permanent electrostatic interaction because the partial charges are both fixed and permanent on those molecules. On the other hand, LDFs are a fleeting interaction. They are temporary. Remember, LDFs occur when the probabilistic skewing of one electron cloud leads to a transient dipole, which induces a dipole on another molecule. However, when and if this occurs in the first place is a game of chance. Quite literally, there is no permanent attraction between these molecules. The symmetric electron clouds on the top left of the diagram have no attraction for one another, while those on the top right with partial charges do. However, as soon as those partially charged molecules move apart, they return to their symmetric orientation, and there is no longer any attraction between one molecule and another. We can see this play out pretty clearly in some fluoromethane species. These three molecules, shown here, vary only in the number of fluorines present, which changes their chemical properties. The left molecule, tetrafluoromethane, has four fluorines and is completely nonpolar due to the symmetry of the tetrahedral geometry. However, it has the largest electron cloud, hence it has the largest alpha value or the largest polarizability value of all of these three compounds and hence has the strongest London dispersion forces out of all of these. However, it has a zero Debye dipole moment and as such experiences no dipole dipole forces. On the other hand, the molecule on the right is significantly polar having an almost two Debye dipole moment, but it has a somewhat smaller uh, polarizability value of an alpha of 2.7. The middle molecule is polar, but has a smaller alpha value than the right molecule since it only has one fluorine, since the fluorines are contributing the majority of the electron cloud since they are larger than both carbon and hydrogen. The boiling points are quite illustrative. The nonpolar molecule on the left has a far lower boiling point than either of the two others, because despite having a larger polarizability and a larger uh, London dispersion force strength, in this case, the small increase in LDF strength due to a few more fluorines pales in comparison to the almost two divide jump in polarity, which leads to very strong dipole-dipole forces. This is because fluorine is a very small, very electronegative atom, which is not very polarizable to begin with. So the LDS for all of these compounds are very weak, and the small gradation increase from one to the other is nowhere near as significant as the change in polarity, since fluorine is very electronegative. This won't be the case though for most molecules. Let's go ahead and consider the opposite case, looking at some chloromethane species in comparison to some fluoromethanes. Here are some very similar species. On the left, we have carbon tetrachloride and chloromethane, and on the right, carbon tetrafluoride and fluoromethane. We already saw that for fluoromethane, the difference in polarity trumps the difference in polarizability. The 1.85 Debye dipole moment is significantly more important in terms of dipole forces than the small change in alpha values is for the change in LDF strength. And as a result, the not very polarizable CF4 is going to have a much lower boiling point than the also not very polarizable CH3F, which is significantly more polar. However, if we go ahead and compare this to the chlorine species, what's going to happen? Well, just as in the other case, the symmetric CCL4 is nonpolar, while the chloromethane has a strong dipole moment, almost exactly the same value, in fact. However, in this case, the nonpolar species actually has the higher boiling point. This is because chlorine is a much larger and more polarizable atom than fluorine, so the difference in polarizability between one chlorine and four chlorines is quite large, almost six alpha units, in fact whereas the difference between one and four fluorines was a difference of only 0.3 alpha units because fluorine is so non-polarizable. In fact, the non-polar chlorine species has a much higher boiling point than any of the other compounds. Here, 
LDFs are completely dominating. We have a completely reverse trend where in these larger CCL4 molecules, the London dispersion forces outcompete the dipole-dipole forces for in the boiling point trend. We also see a similar effect in the hydrogen halide compounds. From left to right here, we have the chloride, bromide, and iodide uh, compounds. As the electronegativity of the halogens decrease, so too will the dipole moment. We can see this with some empirical data. The dipole moment decreases from about 1.1 Debye with HCl to 0 0.4, about 0.45 Debye for HI. However, as the atoms get larger from chlorine to bromine to iodine, the alpha values increase from 2.5 to 5.4. Once again, we see that the LDFs actually dominate. The largest least polar molecule, HI, has the highest boiling point. This is because the high polarizability of the iodine atom trumps the high polarity of the HCl molecule. In this case, LDFs are once again coming out on top. So we see that while in small molecules, like those involving period two elements, C, N, O, or F, dipole moments matter quite a bit, when we talk about larger atoms, like chlorine, uh, bromine, and certainly iodine, polarizability starts to become the dominant factor. I want to go ahead and finish by elaborating on how complex of a balance there is between these two forces and most molecules. So as a final example, we want to consider this wide range of common molecules which have a wide variety of dipoles, alpha values, and which are ranked by boiling point with the largest on the left and the smallest on the right, or rather the highest boiling point on the left and the lowest boiling point on the right. I'm going to go ahead and provide the associated data so we can really hone in on those trends. So on the left, we have DMSO, or dimethyl sulfoxide, which has a very high dipole moment of about 4 to buy, and also a relatively high alpha value of about 8, which is due to the large sulfur atom present in the DMSO molecule. Because it has both very strong dipole forces with a high dipole moment and a very high alpha value leading to strong LDFs, it is going to have by far the highest boiling point at around 189 degrees Celsius. Now, if we move to the next molecule, nitromethane, we'll see that it has a much more modest alpha value of about 4.8, but it still has a very polar uh, character with a dipole moment of about 3.5 Debye. This means that it is still going to be quite high of a boiling point at around 101 degrees Celsius, which is comparable to that of water, although this molecule has no hydrogen bonding. This is due largely to the strength of its dipole forces. However, if we look at the next molecule, we see something very interesting. We see that uh, cyclohex, or I apologize, hexane, n-hexane, has a dipole moment of zero Debye, which means it's completely nonpolar for all intents and purposes. However, we see that it has a polarizability value of 11.6, which is very high. It's by far the highest one here, and it has a boiling point of around 70 degrees Celsius, which is still quite high. It's somewhat comparable to that of water, which is 100 degrees Celsius. And this is being achieved solely through the strength of those London dispersion forces, that very high polarizability owing to the high alpha value due to the very long carbon chain. If we move to the next molecule, CH3Cl, which we already looked at, chloromethane, we see that we're somewhere in between with all the values. We have a 1.87 Debye moment, which is pretty high, and an alpha value of 4.4, which is you know, somewhere in the middle range. And as a result, because it's lower in both in terms of dipole moment and polarizability compared to the previous three molecules, it's going to have a much lower boiling point, negative 24 Celsius. So clearly, the drop-off in both forces simultaneously leads to a very large decrease in uh, boiling point. And if we drop even further, cutting the dipole moment by about half and the polarizability again by about half, we see the boiling point again fall precipitously. If we look at HCl, which is polar and has somewhat of a, an alpha value due to the chlorine, but it pales in comparison to any of the others. So really, uh, both dipole forces and LDF are very important to determining the boiling point of a molecule. And if either is sufficiently strong, it can become the dominant force in determining the behavior of a given species. And with that, we've actually reached the end of the content for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you enjoy what you saw, please like and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to check out our other videos in the chemistry playlist to learn more, and if you're looking to branch out, check out our other science playlists. See you next time!